Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway, and we were going to talk basketball today, but then the Big 12 decided, hey, we're going to throw you know some news your way, and the matchups for the 2024-25 basketball season, we're going to drop them tomorrow. So uh, that news will come out. I guess I can look up real quick the specific time, but uh, we're not that far away from it. It's going to come early morning, um, midday tomorrow is what we're going to end up getting. And that should be a, an exciting time for everybody to know who K-State is going to get to see and everybody else in the league for that matter. So uh, we look forward to whatever that might end up being uh, 24 hours away. And that was posted at 10. So 10 a.m. tomorrow, we'll know who K-State is going to get to see in Manhattan on the road and who they're only going to see in one spot. So we'll talk basketball tomorrow with that news. But in the nature of scheduling and discussing that, as we also know K-State basketball, their schedule is starting to get closer and closer to completion. If you've been on KSO, there's a whole thread with tracking of, of where things are starting to shape up for K-State there. I believe they only have two open spots left that we don't know uh, games for, and they're likely going to be by game opponents. So that's uh, something that you can check out. But with the thought of opponents on the mind, football obviously is set for the next four years. They have the rotation figured out that the Big 12 gave them. Uh, so we know who they're playing the next four seasons in football when it comes to conference play. But we're a little bit more in the dark in terms of what's going to be coming in the future when it is non-conference opponents. The next three seasons, including this year, so 24, 25, and 26, are filled up. K-State this year, we know who they're playing next year. It's North Dakota, it's Army, and then the road game at Arizona, which will be a non-conference game. 2026 is also full. Missouri State, Washington State, Tulane. That's the, the two-for-one situation with Tulane, so they will come back to Manhattan in 2026. But starting in 2027, K-State has an open slot. Only South Dakota and Georgia Southern are locked in. 2028, only Texas State is locked in. And then 29 through 31, it's at Wazoo, Oregon State, and then at Oregon State. So with that in mind, because 2027 beyond, you don't have power conference opponents in there. And I think that K-State would probably be able to skirt by with just counting Oregon State and Washington State uh, because of the scheduling. But in terms of needing to find opponents, and we don't necessarily have to base this in reality because we know some people have open slots and everything else, but just in general, who would be ideal or dream non-conference opponents for you, Drew? Because I know that it's different for everybody else. Uh, they have different criteria for why they want to see somebody play someone. I think a lot of people probably thought Tulane was a great thing because they're like, yeah, I, I would like to go to New Orleans for a football game. I you know, So the road destinations can dictate it. And sometimes you just want to see uh, a cool and unique opponent. But is there anybody that K-State has not played that you think to yourself, that's kind of a dream non-conference situation for me. I want to see that take place on the field. Oh boy. So somebody that case it hasn't played before, I think that that's kind of where it would be like a fun game where you probably don't know how it'll turn out because in 2027, who knows what, <laughs> what college yeah, football is going to look like. It'll probably be in a conference with half the country. <laughs> so uh, the, the first one that is just like a, a unique opponent that case it hasn't played at least to my knowledge, uh, would be Clemson. I think that would be fun going there, having them come to Manhattan. I think that that would be kind of a, a juicy game, and I think it would get everybody pretty amped up. It would be fun. And I, I think that it's just fun to play somebody new and unique, and going to Death Valley and getting to experience that would be really cool. And I think that it would be one of the best home atmospheres that K-State's had for a non-conference game and the return game if they were to come to Manhattan. Uh, another one that would be just kind of fun, and this one I am a lot less confident on Casey, like being competitive in, would be like a game against Georgia. I think that Georgia would be pretty fun. I don't think so. I don't Georgia. think that would be fun. No, well, you know, you said somebody that Casey hasn't played before, and that really cut that really narrows it down. Okay, on, on not the not in the sense of like they've never had one matchup with them. I'm just saying like. 
you know, th- don't pick somebody that, uh, like, don't say Auburn or, again or something. Like, we've seen that within the last 10 years or whatever. Don't say Auburn. USC would be fun again, like, if we're getting, like, a, a, re- a repeat. Or totally like- fine. Or even like Nebraska would be fun again. Like the that that's one where I think that the regionality would really be fun and spicy to play Nebraska. But there, there's a lot of teams that I'm like, eh, I could see that. Like that would be kind of fun. Yeah, I, I'm with you on the Nebraska thing. I think that's one that uh, both sides, fan wise, would be very much in for, uh, and you would like to see again. Obviously, we've seen. Over the last five years, the old Big 12 play each other a lot more often. KU and Missouri are getting ready to play again. K-State and Missouri have played two games. Colorado and Nebraska have reignited. Nebraska and Oklahoma have also played. Uh, so I like that. I like when the the old Big 12 gets together, and it would make sense for K-State and Nebraska to do something like that. So that that would definitely be one on the radar. But in terms of thinking of like, Who's somebody a little unique, somebody that we we haven't seen in a long time or ever against K-State? I'll throw that caveat in there. That way Drew doesn't take it so uh, <laughs> so literally next time. I didn't want to put you in a bad spot there. I didn't want you to have to go through and be like, God, oh, has K-State played so-and-so 80 years ago? Uh, but in terms of thinking, like, I think there are some on here that have, you know, K-State has now – become conference mates with that it would have been kind of fun to go see. Like I think Arizona state is one that um, I just think like the sun devil uh, Sparky is iconic. And obviously people like going to, to Tempe or something like uh, I think that's, that's a, a fun matchup and it's just unique to get to play a team like that. It's about to become a whole lot less unique now uh, because of how it ends up working out. And then I also think about like some of those bowl games that K state's played where they got Michigan and they got LSU, these, you know, historic powers. And now you caught them at the wrong time or at the right time for K-State. But uh, that was fun just to be able to be there and go, man, that's Michigan on the field. That's LSU playing out in front of me. Um, I think, I think honestly, personally, like a couple of big 10 teams that I would love to see K-State play at some point uh, is Iowa and Penn State, just for selfish reasons. Um Number one, like I think those are two of the most overrated teams year in, year out when we're talking about college football. No doubt that they are good and like they've proven themselves as programs, but we just are like, well, yeah, you know, they lost to Ohio State and Michigan and then they beat up on everybody else. It's like, well, everybody else sucks. So I I can't really tell you if they're that good or not. Um, And I think, I think K State and Iowa, like there's just so many similarities there. And then obviously you, you have the tie. Uh, with you know with Bill Snyder and in, in Iowa and how that all worked out, I think that would be a really fascinating uh, kind of non-conference matchup. It might be you know it might make you want to stab your eyes out if you're watching it on TV. Sometimes I, both of those sides can maybe get a little bit hairy for you. And then this is where like it gets weird too because you start to think about like well all these other teams like they're already a part of what you know you're you're doing and they're coming in because I think Colorado. Uh, has was one for a long time that you thought that's going to be exciting when K State and Colorado meet up again, and now we're just going to get it as you know conference mates with each other. Um, I I think like I, I don't know I, I think Tennessee would be a fun one. I, I you know I just like everything that goes on with with that. Uh, in terms of the ACC, like I, I get what you're saying with Clemson. Uh, that would be another one that would be kind of fun because I think. Uh, anytime you catch Clemson over the next five to 10 years, you're probably going to catch them at the right time. I don't think you're going to get them at the level they were, uh, you know, five years ago or whatever you'd consider outside of that. I don't know that the ACC has a ton, maybe, maybe Florida state would be one of those that you would throw in the mix. Florida state would be the only ACC team outside of Clemson that I would even consider. I mean, we talked yesterday about how, overrated and lame we think that virginia tech's atmosphere is so wouldn't yeah. want to play them virginia has always been terrible boston college syracuse not really relevant and, and then like you look at the rest of the acc like louisville maybe like the, yeah, there isn't just... there, that's not a really like juicy matchup the, another one that i just kind of thought of while we were talking and it's other old big 12 school texas a&m why why not yeah. I think that especially now 
that game would get a little bit more spicy. But I, I think that that would be kind of fun. But even like looking around the SEC, like Florida maybe, but Florida isn't exactly what they used to be either. Yeah. And then Auburn has came to K-State not like super recently, but like recent enough that it's like, eh. So I think that you just kind of look around and it's, it almost makes you want to go towards the Big Ten and more of like the West Coast Big Ten schools like Washington and like UCLA again and USC and Oregon even. Yeah. And I think that that would be kind of the games that are more fun. I've got my dog and daughter now playing with each other in here. This is fantastic uh, timing on their part. Uh, I think three that aren't like affiliated with big name conferences. One is a big name, two are not, but these are three that I would throw, you know, not affiliated with the big 10 ACC SEC or anything, but I would say Notre Dame is obviously like probably a no brainer for a lot of people. That's another one of those iconic type of schools to see and, and get to experience like, man, that's Notre Dame out there. I think we've seen that with some of the matchups that were projected at times in bowl games for K-State. That also ties into what you said about USC. I just, these two, I could not, this is the most they've ever been like heavily interacted with each other. Uh, But then I would also steer towards the, you know, if we're looking for G5 competition for K-State, that would be interesting. Boise State would be one that I think you would throw out there. Uh, And that's one that, like, if you did the whole two-for-one thing and K-State did a trip to Boise, uh, people would probably like to see them on the blue turf one time. We know Oklahoma State just went there recently. Um, I'm trying to think if any other Big 12 teams have been there in recent memory. Um, I feel like almost maybe there's one other that I'm forgetting. And then the other that I would toss in, and this would also give you the opportunity to do something a little unique and different, Uh, Because if you go there, you get to play an extra game on your schedule. But I think think playing Hawaii would be a fun one for everybody. You know, everybody's dying for K-State to get back into the Maui Invitational to be able to go to Hawaii. Hey, don't put all this on Jerome Tang. Get Chris (laughs) Kleiman to to plan another big vacation for you. He's already taken you to Ireland, getting to take you to the islands in Hawaii and uh, go play the Rainbow Warriors. So that... Those would be three outside of, you know, conference affiliation, SEC, Big Ten, ACC that I would throw out there. Because I was trying to think, okay, this can't all just be like, it'd be really fun to play some of the biggest names in college football. Uh, Boise State and Hawaii would be two that, you know, they've got that history in like the the mid-2000s and on to where they're relevant in people's mind and they're just unique locations and spots for one reason or the other. Yeah, I would say if we're going to do like these novelty, like G5 teams, I think Hawaii obviously has to be one because, I mean, I think that would be pretty cool if we were able to go to Hawaii. And I think that I think that we could probably make that work to go cover the K-State game in Hawaii. And then uh, just another novelty team that I just thought of, Coastal Carolina with the teal field. I think that would be kind of cool to see in person. I know that you're I know that you're a purist and it has to be green. But I, I don't care. I just the teal the teal field is ugly. Uh I mean yeah. I just I just suggested the blue turf. I here's my thing. I'm not a traditionalist, but I do like things to be original. And we know that like Boise State did it and then everybody has tried to copy them. So, you know, if you're just trying to whatever. Uh I guess if you're if you want a different colored field, and this would be one that I think we get a lot of people in, to endorse. How about K State go on the road to play at Eastern Michigan on a <laughs> Tuesday night to give K State a taste of action? If you really wanted to get crazy, uh, I mean that that field is also wild. The other yes. kind of the other novelty team that I think would be kind of fun in the G five would be Appalachian State. I just think that their history too, and really pretty stadium, really good view. I think you get a two for one with them. I mean. They just went to uh, the toughest place to win in college football and beat Texas A&M. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Well, I don't know. I would probably say K State should learn from others. Don't play App State. Do not schedule them. That's not going to go well for you. Uh, just ask anybody that gets them on the schedule. I mean, like North Carolina going there on the road, and you're going, "What are you? What are you doing? You're, you're gonna, you're just setting yourself up." Um, another one, and this is what's unfortunate because of how K State schedule sets up. 
uh, because next year they are going to face Army. No more service academies. They are <laughs> they're not fun to watch, and they are a you know what to try and game plan for, as evidenced by K State's struggles in the Liberty Bowl against Navy. No service academies. That is a that does nothing for you. They are, you know, what I th- I thought going into the Liberty Bowl, I was like, oh, you know, it'd be kind of cool. Like, say I've seen Navy. I know I, I did not leave the Liberty Bowl thinking that I was like that was really stupid. That was not enjoyable. Uh, well, so, I, I think it, I think if the outcome was flipped, it would have been a little bit more enjoyable. Maybe. I I think I I would have just not really cared. Um, I think <laughs> if you're gonna play one though, I'd I'd rather play Air Force. Um, oh, see, I, I'd rather play Army than the other service academies. So I and then I don't know that there's anybody else out there that really comes across as being special to me. Now, if we're talking, you know, that FCS opponent, is there an FCS opponent out there that would be a dream one? Because I think the easy one would be Chris Kleiman just has to call up his boys and make it happen. I think K-State has to play North Dakota State again. And I'll pass. <laughs> no, I think, I think you got to go for redemption and put Chris Kleiman in that situation. Uh, I, I would say the, the two would have to be uh, North Dakota State. I also think that South Dakota State would be kind of fun. I mean, they're the reigning FCS champs. They, they, oh, play, well, they, they play Oklahoma State this year. That's a that's a sneaky, yeah. tricky first game of the season. Alan Bowman will State. probably lose that game and then <laughs> miraculously find seven wins in Big 12 play somehow. Uh, yeah, I, I, I only say North Dakota State because of – the ties there and obviously i mean you can't have the bad taste of 2013 in your mouth forever at some point you got to try and wash that out of there uh but i i would not want to play any of the good ones that's for certain no. I, I would steer clear of that so those those would probably be it i i don't know that there's really anybody else to to kind of go for i mean if dana demel was still kicking at utep it would just be a probably a pretty cathartic experience uh, for for K State fans, <laughs> to, why, to why see not that happen? Why not Old Dominion get Blake Siler DC? Why not Old Dominion make it happen? Maybe K State should just have a, a scrimmage or something, an open scrimmage, and bring back Dana Dimmel to be the OC for the uh, <laughs> opposing scrimmage team, and just let everybody get it all out and be like, "Yeah, well, I knew this could happen." Let uh, everybody get it all out. <laughs> I just think that would have been a really good thing for everybody, but uh, I don't know. So that I think that's about it. I don't know where else you would want to go to to try and suggest somebody unique or kind of crazy. I bet there, are, I bet other people have different reasons behind who they would want to see and and where the thought process would come from. I, I'm sure that there are like some nice stadiums out there, or there's some significant meaning to people. But my guess would be. A popular one from from the G five ranks for everybody else would be UNLV, but no part yeah. of me wants to go to that stadium. Like the Raiders I'm, stadium, I that doesn't really do anything for me. That's not a good enough reason. Like I, I'm already kind of lukewarm on Vegas having Big Twelve Media Day, so I'm like, eh, Vegas, sure, like fun, but like I don't really think that's worth playing at UNLV for. Yeah, I yeah, I think K State's played enough NFL stadiums recently that uh, I don't know that they they have a reason to just schedule somebody to go and play in one. But uh, people do like the the excuse to go to Vegas. But I, I do think at the end of the day, you want most of these to come to you. So if you are like thinking that route, then probably bring in one of those big dogs that you talked about early on. And and now the way that the playoff is set up. Uh, losing a non-conference game against somebody does not mean anything, as K-State has proven over the last couple of years. Like, they lost that game to Tulane, and they still went and played in the Sugar Bowl. And now, with that way that would have worked out, they could have still lost that game to Tulane. They could have gone 0-3 in that non-conference and done what they did in Big 12 play and still made the playoffs. So the non-conference has been devalued in, in college football so you can dream a little bit bigger and maybe take a little bit more chances. I doubt teams actually start thinking that way, uh, but you certainly but could will. do that. I think that there will be some teams that will because what do you really brand lose? Recognition. Yeah, like what do you really lose by playing a huge non-conference game right now? Especially if you're a Big 12 or ACC school where 
all you really have to do is win the conference and you're going to make it. So well, yeah. <laughs> why not schedule pretty aggressively? This feels like, you know, when we get to that point that everybody talks about that's coming, but it never has shown up is like, if we get that overarching college football commissioner or whatever, and then things get even more expanded and connected and we're consolidated down into two or three big old conferences is if you then can mandate and somebody makes a schedule for you. And then that way you find out like, Hey, uh, one of your non-conference game is always going to come against a regional power conference opponent. So like, you know, then every year, if you're K-State, you're going to get to see like a Nebraska an Iowa, Missouri an Oklahoma and Arkansas, somebody like that, that would bring a little bit of juice. And then you have the regionality impact in there because if K-State ends up playing, you know, like when they played Auburn, for example, like, there's no beef between K-State and Auburn fans. Like, there's no reason for them to have that. But now, obviously, there's the history that goes into K-State and Missouri. But there's also just a lot that in regionality, like, I was driving through Oklahoma this past weekend, and I thought to myself, Oklahoma's a really crappy state. Like, they, they want to be Texas, but they're discount Kansas. Like, that's what – that's my thought of Oklahoma. So you have that because I'm sure Oklahoma's saying they got the coolest state and that Kansas sucks. So you already have kind of that naturalness to it. And then, you know, some of the others uh, as well. Just no part of me wants to play Arkansas again in a sport for a while. Just no part of mm. me. I don't want to deal with the the calling of the hogs again. Pretty, It's pretty lame when you really think about it. I, you, I don't know. <laughs> Not the most exciting. You know, I don't. I don't think that you have to really think about it for it to <laughs> to be, be lame. lame. Yeah, that's true. That's probably just the second you you say like, yeah, that's lame. I think that it just kind of is. Uh, as speaking of lame things in Arkansas, did you see that one of the you know they did the sights and sounds thing for EA Sports today, showing more of what's going to be in the game, and they showed some of the the chants that were in it and kind of giving some insight to that. Um, and some of them were were notable and everything else like makes sense uh what they ended up having uh like i know that i saw the like rock chalk jayhawk was in there okay whatever there, there was a, but there was a couple that i had never heard that school say before and i was like <laughs> why why did you send that okay but did you see that one of the chants that uh was you know i think tossed in there at one point maybe um, was SEC schools are going to have the SEC chant. Yeah. That is yeah, the that's... lamest thing ever. I, I just <laughs> – because, number one, yeah. if you're Alabama or Georgia and you're doing the winning, why are you rooting for your conference there? You're the one propping it up. And then if you're South Carolina or Arkansas, you're not doing jack for your conference, but you're still wanting the accolades of it. You know, like, that would be – if if K-State didn't go on the Elite Eight run last year in basketball and they just had another crappy year or whatever, and it, it, it's been, it would have been since 2019 that they had been in the NCAA tournament. If they had gone five years without an NCAA tournament appearance or been like a respectable team, K-State fans, they, you don't get the right to be like, yeah, we're a part of the toughest league in the country when it comes to basketball. No, you're in the toughest league, but you have no say in that. We now know that K-State with Jerome Tang and what he's doing, K-State can puff their chest out. They are part of what makes the Big 12 one of the toughest leagues in the country. Oklahoma State fans, you cannot take credit for Big 12 basketball right now. you got to earn that. That's my th The SEC chant is just so, so stupid. But I'm glad that it's the gift that keeps on giving for people to make fun of. Uh, did you see the SMU one is pretty creative. Uh, SMU, SMU, SMU. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's a good one. I, I I wonder how long it took him to come up with that. That's <laughs> that's decades upon decades of tradition that got that locked in. Uh I can't wait to cut my ears off the second I hear the Riff Ram TCU <laughs> chant. Uh Liber Liberty's about. Liberty's being moved the chains is also hilarious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that's said in a lot of places, but I don't know. No, just Liberty. Yeah, just Liberty. Uh, some of the others that were listed on here, Ball State, they have chirp, chirp, chirp. Um, I would love to know if that's a real thing or if EA was just like, well, they're birds. You know, here's a little specific. Uh, well, they're birds. 
yeah let's see what else we got Ooh. in here um southern miss nasty bunch nasty bunch nasty bunch they must just be talking about brett Favre. uh <laughs> let's see what else is in here east carolina another really creative one purple gold uh <laughs> seeing these written out a texas state has texas state um <laughs> Georgia Southern, whose house? Our house. That's, Seeing them written out is hilarious. Like it, yeah. They're like it doesn't make a lot of sense, but I'm excited to see what kind of what all happens with all of those. But yeah, that's being in it super lame. Yeah, I mean it makes sense. It's a thing that happens, but it is, uh, it's very lame. So we'll uh, we'll see. D- does this mean that we get sarcastic SEC chants when a team beats an SEC school? We should. I that should be in there. Uh, here's a, they showed some of like the motion capture for celebrating rivalry victories. Do you think that they just decided that they could save time by not showing KU celebrating with the Governor's <laughs> Cup? Ooh, <laughs> that'll do it for the that, KSO that, show today. No, we'll just we'll just end it right there. Uh, and then let that sink in. All right. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Both. We'll be back again tomorrow talking basketball. K State, they will know their basketball conference opponents for the upcoming season. The move to 20 games. Say your prayers tonight if you want them to avoid somebody twice or if you want to make sure they get a home game against somebody. Or like Drew and I just talked about, you want a kick ass road trip to uh, get, get the basketball juices flowing. So. That'll do it for us. If you want news on K-State basketball and football recruiting, head over to kstateonline.com and stay locked in right here on the KSO YouTube uh, as we come to you every time there's breaking news or a commitment and uh, updates daily on the Wildcats. So we're out of here. Talk to you again tomorrow.